Have you been wondering how to secure articles for your dissertation literature review? And has your faculty been telling you, hey, we need to have this literature within a certain time frame? And you're not quite sure how to do it. And then how to do it in a way to make sure that you get the right articles for your dissertation literature review? If so, this is the video you want to watch. In this short Dunn dissertation pro tip series, I'm going to share with you my process on how to find articles for your dissertation literature review. My name is Dr. Ramon Goings, and I'm founder of Dunn Dissertation, where our goal is to help doctoral students write and defend their dissertation in one year or less. And then our Dunn Dissertation Pro Tip Series, I will share quick and actionable strategies to make you an even more efficient researcher. So let's get into it. When we are looking to secure literature for our literature review, my first process and where I start from is actually Google Scholar. I feel like it's a great place to start from, and I would recommend that you do so. And so we're going to dive right in. I'm going to show you what this looks like and how I approach securing articles for the literature review. So here we have Google Scholar pulled up. What I want you to consider, right, when you're looking up Google Scholar is to first things first is to make sure, you know, that if you don't already have an account for yourself. So in the My Profile section at the top uh, left, you can hit My Profile. Like I have a profile for myself because I'm a researcher and college professor. So you can see I have my own sit set up. And so this is something that I just recommend you do from the start. And then what you're going to do is start to accumulate articles, right? And I'm going to give an example here. Let's say our topic for today was uh, looking at math anxiety, for instance. And so excuse me for that noise as I move my mic around. And so we're going to talk about mathematics anxiety. So that's the term we're interested in learning more about. And we're going to, you know, our dissertation might be focused in that area. So we're going to look up the term first. What you will have here is just a layout of all available articles here. One additional tip for this is that when you are um, searching articles in Google Scholar, it's best. I think a lot of university libraries are doing this now is that you go through your university library first whereas you sign into the university library and then go through your university to get to Google Scholar. And what will happen is any article that's available in your school library's database will be available on the right-hand side. You'll see PDFs, HTMLs, they'll take you right to the articles. So that's just something to consider. And most university libraries now have that type of system set up. So initially we get here, we see that we have a lot of results, you know, 2.25 million results for this particular uh, topic. We have a lot of different articles to choose from. And so what I like to do is just initially take a look to see if there's any things that stick out. You may notice that there are certain leaders in your area and just take a look at the first page, right? To see if there are any names that stick out, names that repeat. Because our goal first is to really get an understanding, like, do we understand what is happening in terms of the landscape of our area? And so it's good to know who the key researchers are. Then from there, when I, I, I do some looking around, I then know because you know, faculty members sometimes put these year restrictions on what you can search for. I usually right now, at the time it's recording is 2024. So I would go, usually I go since 2020, right? The last four years. Then it'll help me narrow down, right? So all this on the left, you can narrow down by year. And so first I go 2020, see what happens, see what I get. And then I know, hey, I might have a, a, a maybe a wider range. So maybe I can go from, you know, 2014 and I can go to 2024. And so now if we do a search, we'll find all the articles that fall within that 10 year range. And this is usually how I do it first. You can sort by relevance is which I like to do to start out with, but you could sort by date. And so literally it'll give you the new articles first. So it'll go 2024 back. Uh, so it just depends on what you're trying to do. And again, you have other types. You can go review articles, include citations, you know, there's so many options, but when, let's say we sort, sort by relevance and, you know, we noticed that this particular Dowker at all piece is cited quite a lot. So we see that it's cited 113 times. And so what I usually like to do first is to actually go to, uh, usually I'll click on the actual document. And then from there, it normally will take you to the actual journal article. So here we have the journal article um, at Frontiers. And then what I usually will do from here is I will read, if they have an abstract available, I'll read that first. It seems like here they have the whole paper kind of just starts right off. And so I usually read the, art, the abstract to figure out, is this a good article? And if so, I go ahead and download it to my computer. Um, and then if I find like, you know, this is a great thing I want to keep, what I will then do is hit the, the site button right here. And I'm going to zoom in so that you all can see it a little bit better, is that I will hit the site button. And then it gives me the citation in whatever format I need it in. Sometimes you're still going to have to do some editing to some extent, because like this APA is a little bit off. So 
but it gives you a starting point where you're not, you know, and what I would do is copy this and drop it into a Word document. I just keep a running citation list. And again, whatever format. And then if you're using any of the electronic citation management system like RefWorks, RefMan, EndNote, a BibTeX, you can use that here. If you happen to use a Zotero or one of those other citations uh, management systems, uh, you sometimes will have a banner that pops at the top of the page and you can add it to your um, list in your whatever citation format that you use. And so, you know, that's what I do there. And then what ends up happening, what I like about Google Scholar is that not only can I find that article, but then I can find who cited that article because that might give me an inclination about who else is doing work in the same area. So literally what I will do next is hit the cited by. Now, from here, now I get to see all the other articles that were citing it. So we got a piece in 2021. You know, you see here we got a piece in 2018 and you can go through this and do this over and over again. And it'll help you get a landscape of like who are the key authors. Right. But let's say, for instance, I'm going to go back to our main page. We do this. You can go through all these. You can download them, do all the same things that we did. But let's say, for instance, we find I'm going to go back to the main page that Dowker is our main uh, author, let's say, for instance. And so we might click on this person's work and we get to see who they are there at Oxford, and then we get to see all of their citations that that particular author has done. So now what we're able to do is then look around to see, hmm, what other things have they written about this issue around math anxiety? We can see that one article that we looked up was their most cited piece, because right now we have it organized by cited by, but we might look through and see, do they have anything else on math anxiety? We see some stuff on students with math difficulties, this calcula, works for children with mathematical difficulties. So you can kind of see this author's work. Another way if you want, if you're looking within a author is to actually where it's cited by right now. So it'll show you the most cited piece from the person first. We then will go by year. From there, what we will do is then look by year and it's categorized starting with their most recent. So they have a 2024 piece down through. So you can go through someone's body of work to also look. This is helpful because if you're trying to understand if this person might be a key person in your area, you want to know all their work. And then lastly, the best part I like about this is that you can hit the follow button and literally what it will do is then send you a notice and you can set up parameters about how you would uh, want things covered if you wanted to hit, you know, you could say new articles by this author, new citations, et cetera. And then you can put your email address in in order to, um, you know, follow that author. That's something you could do. And then you hit done. It will be added to your library. So I like uh, Google um, Scholar is a first place to start when I'm looking up articles. And then when you start to accumulate the list, you'll have a great body of work because, you know, you can go side it by side it by over and over again. And it can kind of take you down a rabbit hole, but you will have enough so that you can have a comprehensive view of what's happening in your dissertation area. And again, I wanted to give you a quick tip, something that you can easily implement today in order to find literature for your dissertation literature review. And with that said, I want to say thank you so much for watching this episode of our Dunn Dissertation Pro Tip Series. And if you happen to be someone who is looking for more hands-on support and you want to get your dissertation done, but you're just not quite sure and don't have the support and structure to do so, I would invite you to work with us in our Velocity Coaching Program. We have a coaching program that over a four-month period, our goal is to help you either get to your dissertation proposal defense or final dissertation if you're past proposal defense. And you can learn more about our program and to work with us if you go to www.velocitydissertation.com. Again, it's www.velocitydissertation.com. We want to help more people get their dissertations done, but we want to give you all some quick, actionable pro tips first. But we know that there you might need more support. So if that's you, please visit www.velocitydissertation.com to learn more about our program, or you can pause this video and scan the QR code. It will take you right to our website and you can apply to work with us. And again, I want to say thank you so much for tuning into this Dunn Dissertation Pro Tip Series. I am your host, Dr. Ramon Goings, founder of Dunn Dissertation. And until next time, let us know about any topics that you are interested in learning more about that are quick and actionable that you want to get some insight on. And we'd be happy to do these videos. We're trying to keep them 10 minutes and under so that we can help you all get to the finish line in record time. But again, I want to say thank you so much for watching this episode. Until next time, I wish you all a great success and a done dissertation. Take care.